Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to bring you part five in my series on curses. And in this series, we've been covering the ins and outs of curses from all kinds of different directions and perspectives. So if you haven't watched the videos one through four, I suggest that you go back and do that, especially because we've got some foundational information in those first videos, including the way that I'm defining a curse. And in part five, we're going to be discussing protection and prevention. The first most important thing to talk about is your level of protection and prevention is really going to depend greatly upon your beliefs as well as your individualized personal practices. So obviously somebody who's practicing a lot of magic or working with spirits or somebody who is around a lot of intense energy, a lot of intense activity, or perhaps who has a lot of challenges in their lives, a person of this nature or experiencing this nature of things is going to need more prevention and more protection than the average person. Also, the methods for protection and prevention are going to vary depending upon your beliefs as well. So what I'm going to do here is speak from my perspective about my beliefs, but I encourage you also to do some research on your own and to look into methods that work well for you and that you feel resonate with you because it is very important to make these practices a personalized thing. It is very important that the actions that you take on behalf of your own spiritual and magical well-being are things that resonate with you, mean something to you, and really feel right to you. So spiritual protection can happen in a lot of different ways. <clears throat> the reason that I'm starting with protection is because that is going to be your most uh, powerful form of prevention. And as I said, if you're someone who is going to be performing a lot of spiritual work or performing a lot of magic or around a lot of those kinds of activities and energies, then protection is going to be especially important for you. And spiritual protection is one is something that can happen in a lot of different ways. And what I most strongly suggest is having a strong relationship with your ancestors or with your deities or with your spirit guides, your guardian spirits, and so forth. And if you don't have a strong relationship with any particular spirit or deity or entity at this point, then you can always determined to work with pure universal energy. Also, in many traditions, it is said that your angel, your guardian angel, is there for you, regardless if you've developed a relationship with them or not, regardless if you communicate with them or not, or if you even know that they're there or not, they are there. And many people believe that the only thing needed in order to get protection from them or get assistance from them or ask for help in your time of need is simply to ask. There are also many traditions which believe that your or spirit guides or guardian spirits are not going to intervene on your behalf because unless you ask them because they don't want to interfere with your free will. So keep that in mind that you can always just ask for protection. Now, if you have a more in-depth relationship with your ancestors, let's say, for example, then asking them for protection on a regular basis is going to be your strongest force. That's going to be your strongest protection that you can rely upon in your life. And asking for protection, regardless of where you ask from it, for it from, that's going to be your most important practice and your strongest defense um, regardless. So ask for protection on a regular basis. That's the first and foremost most important thing. And energetic protection is another thing that you can perform on your own. And energetic protection doesn't need to rely upon any kind of spiritual intervention. So this is not about your relationship with your ancestors or your guides or your angels or your deities. This is something that you can do for yourself. You can also choose to work with energy that is pure universal energy 
pure energy coming from the universe if you would like to, or you can use your own energy by raising energy and then directing energy in order to protect yourself. You can do this through what I would consider to be classical energy work, which would be channeling energy through your body and then using that to create a barrier of protection around yourself. Or you can simply visualize protective energy surrounding yourself. There are a lot of different ways to do that, so it's important to figure out what works best for you. You can use a fiery wall of energy around yourself, so envision fire surrounding you and protecting you and burning away any impurities or anything negative or unwanted. You can use bright white light if you would like to. Personally, I use a light blue light around me. One thing that I would recommend is that if you're going to be doing this kind of energetic protection on a regular basis, that you set the intention that this energy field will let in things that you want it to let in. It will let in positive things. It will let in positive energies. It will let in whatever you want it to let in, but it will keep out anything unwanted, unneeded, or negative, right? And then the other um, tip for this kind of energy work is to make sure that you can visualize it from all aspects of yourself. So see it over your head, see yourself from beneath, see it around your feet, see yourself from behind, see it surrounding you there. Make sure that you are fully encapsulated in this energy. So there's a lot of different kinds of ways to use energy techniques in order for protection for yourself. So as I said, I, met, I would like you to do some research about that yourself as well. Now, as far as prevention is concerned, one of the biggest things that I recommend is that you do not engage in magic, which is harmful, destructive, forceful, or in any way heavy-handed and not justified not justified. That's very important. So um, we need to make sure that when we're engaging in that kind of magic that it is for an important reason and that it is justified. If it is not justified, then we are leaving ourselves open to, we're leaving ourselves vulnerable for that magic to come back on us and for rep repercussions to hit us. So when you work with that kind of magic, it needs to be justified. This is all about prevention. If you are a sensitive person, then you need to take some precautions, right? Especially when going into um, highly uh, magically charged or spiritually charged spaces, perhaps spaces that people consider to be haunted, perhaps spaces that people um, consider that there have been um, intense happenings in the past. There are energetic imprints of um, intense events that have happened in those places. If you're a very sensitive person, then you tend to pick up on the energies of the places that you go and of the people around you. So if you're a sensitive person, you're going to be wanting to take precautions in regards to protecting yourself in some way, shape, or form. And this is something that should be done on a regular basis. Again, if you work with spirits, you're going to want to take precautions as well. And some examples of those precautions would be to know who you are, are are working with. So this would apply most specifically to somebody who is just starting out and developing a relationship with their ancestors. And you want to know who you're working with. That doesn't mean that you have to know what specific ancestor it is, but you do eventually need to have a knowing or some kind of proof that it is indeed an ancestor. This applies to building a relationship with a deity or some kind of guide as well. It's recommended that you build this relationship for quite some time until you have the strong knowing and you are secure that this spirit is in fact who they say they are and they are not um, in the guise of some other spirit, that they're not um, trying to manipulate you or feed off of your energy, that they're not presenting themselves as something that they are not. Now, I don't mean to spread fear because this isn't something that um, happens 
all of the time. This isn't something that is extremely likely to happen, but this is something that does happen when we work with spirits. All kinds of spirits can show up. Sometimes they say that they're somebody that they're not. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have malicious intentions. They could even be just being playful, but the, th the thing is you have to get to know who they are before you go further in your relationship with them. You have to build trust just like you would in any other kind of relationship with any other kind of individual, including a human. So the other thing about working with spirits, another precautionary um, action that you can take is to make sure that you are very strong and direct in your intentions, especially when leaving out offerings or when asking for help or assistance, um, those kinds of things. Make sure that it is known who the offerings are for. Make sure that it is known who you are seeking to communicate with, who you are seeking to make connections with. Just don't leave yourself open to any situations where you're going to be vulnerable to other kinds of spirits um, showing up, right? Or feeding off of the energy that you leave out, the offerings that you leave out. Now, some other forms of prevention are going to be in, in the way of cleansing ourselves. And there's a lot of different ways that we can cleanse ourselves of energies and a lot of different um, aspects that this can apply to. When we're working with spirits, guides, ancestors, deities, whatever it may be, we need to make sure that we say goodbye to them at the end of our interaction with them. Thank you and goodbye, a firm goodbye. Now, some people in some traditions, they would um, even consider it mandatory to do a banishing ritual at the end of this kind of spiritual interaction in order to make sure the spirit energy is gone. In spiritualism, which I practice, we don't do that, but we do say a firm goodbye. Now if we, the reason we don't do that is because our guides need to be around us um, on a regular basis so we're not going to banish them that's just not uh, how we work but in in what is called high magic that's oftentimes how they work. They would banish an entity after working with it because it's not something that you want around all the time. Now if you were doing some kind of spiritual work in spiritualism or another kind of path and you had a strange sensation or a strange intuition or a weird feeling or something that seemed just unsettling or negative occur while you were making contact with the spirit, say you were practicing mediumship and you're making contact and you felt something very strange, then you would want to do a banishing. And there's a lot of different ways that a banishing can be performed. So in traditional European witchcraft, they have what is called a thurible. And it's basically just alcohol and herbs and salt that you set on fire in a fireproof container in order to purify the, the room, the space, in order to energetically purify the space. And in spiritualism or espiritismo, um, we do something very similar, but it's just with Florida water. So you can also pour Florida water into a bowl because it's an alcohol. It's a cologne. A cologne has an alcohol base. And you can light that on fire in order to energetically purify your space. So those are just two examples of banishing that you can perform in a space for any reason that it needs to be purified or for any kind of energies that you need to get rid of because um, cleansing is going to take you a long way in preventing any kind of unwanted energies and unwanted energies turn into energetic blockages which it are in effect a curse, right? So having a strong relationship with your ancestors, guardians, or guides are going to go a long way in protecting you as well as we've already discussed, as well as in prevention because you can always ask them when you have gone through something that is strange, traumatic, difficult, or you've encountered a situation where you've been perhaps magically threatened or you know that you've come in contact with some heavy magical energy and you don't want it associated with you, you can always ask them to assist you with cleansing. So 
Um, they cannot, they do not have to only assist you with protection. They can also assist you with cleansing. They can also assist you with removing energies. They can assist you with actually curse breaking or actually removing blockages or actually removing unwanted energies. So they can assist you in all ways. Remember, they are existing on the spiritual plane, right? So they can do the work there on the spiritual plane, which is in turn going to affect you. As long as your relationship is is strong with them and you have faith that they can help you in that way, then they will help you in that way. You can also work with pure universal energy in order to cleanse yourself energetically simply by pulling that pure universal energy through your crown chakra through your body, maybe even envisioning it filling up your entire space and surrounding your body. You can work with and rely upon that sort of energy to cleanse you as well. Cleansing your space and yourself anytime you've been through something difficult or traumatic, um, anytime you're feeling down or lethargic, anytime you've come into contact with intense spiritual or metaphysical or magical energy is going to be one of the most important things that you can do to prevent a curse. Again, a curse is unwanted energies that turn into an energetic blockage. Cleansing yourself and your space is going to be one of your most powerful allies in preventing any kind of unwanted energies or energetic blockages. I encourage you to do some research about how to cleanse yourself and your space energetically, spiritually, magically. One of my favorite ways to cleanse yourself or myself would be a spiritual bath. And one of my favorite spiritual baths is a citrus unblocking bath in which you squeeze fresh limes and lemons into your bath water, add some kosher sea salt in order to add extra intensity. Um, this one I recommend being hot, although many baths um, are recommended to be at room temperature or even cool. This one I recommend being hot. Squeeze as many of those as you can into your bath water. Dunk your head under the water at least three times. Remain in the bath for at least 20 minutes. Say some prayers, maybe some psalms, um, or perform some meditations or a prayer to your ancestors or your guides while you're in there. Perhaps light some white candles, and that's a very powerful powerful unblocking bath. Now if you need something stronger, if you have been uh, exposed to some kind of unwanted or negative spirit or you know that somebody has tried to place something upon you or somebody has threatened to curse you, something more challenging, something more intensive, then make a strong tea out of rue and pour that tea in, strain it and pour that tea into your bath water. Be careful that you don't use too much rue because rue can be toxic, so don't drink it, right? Don't, uh, don't imbibe rue. Be careful with rue around pets and small children, but you can definitely add two full cups of that to a large stock pot of water and add that to your bath water. It will work wonders. Um, another simple spiritual bath for unblocking would be coffee, strongly brewed black coffee. You can even mix the roux and the coffee and some sea salt. So you get the picture. These are some basic ingredients for creating a spiritual bath to cleanse yourself and prevent unwanted energies or curses. I also gave you some examples of how to cleanse your space, so please do follow up on that if this is a topic that is important to you. Do some research on your own. I hope this video has given you some ideas and some foundational information about how to protect from curses and how to prevent curses. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video. Stay blessed, everyone.